Throughout much of human civilization, streets were maintained and kept clean by individual people through tough and pretty disgusting manual labor. These people functioned as both street cleaners and garbage men, as most trash ended up in the streets anyway. But at a certain point in history, the two livelihoods diverged. If you'd like to know more about the history of garbage men, I've already made a video on the topic, which I'll link in the description below. But I'd recommend finishing this video first, because I'm shameless and I love views. It was during the Industrial Revolution in the United Kingdom that street sweeping really took off, as manufacturing cities grew with little care for cleanliness. All sorts of rubbish ended up in the streets during this time, forcing the hand of local authorities to, very literally, clean up their streets. Once garbage men became a permanent fixture of these industrial metropolises, most of the bulk refuse was taken care of, but the streets themselves still had a filthy appearance, which could only be solved by a bunch of men with brooms. Most manual street sweepers were only tasked with clearing refuse, but there were some employed specifically to collect horse droppings for their usage as fertilizer. Thankfully for all these broom holders, a man named Joseph Whitworth stepped onto the scene and invented the first mechanical street sweeper in 1843 in Manchester, England. Designed as a horse-drawn wagon, the mechanics of this first sweeper were quite clever, as the rotational force generated from the wheels was used to power a small conveyor belt towards the rear of the wagon. This conveyor belt featured many bristles that helped to catch small refuse and particles which were then carried up the belt and into the wagon. This innovation was a godsend for street sweepers at the time, and though humans were certainly still needed for the finer details, Whitworth's invention drastically reduced the time it took to clean a street. A few years later, in 1849, a man by the name of C.S. Bishop invented another, more complex variation of Whitworth's design. Bishop's sweepers separated the bristles and the conveyor belt into two separate parts, which again utilized the power generated by the wheels to operate. Surprisingly, there's been no evidence found to suggest that this design ever made its way into production, and as far as we know, Bishop fell off the face of the earth after filing the patent. The first self-propelled street sweeper was invented by a man named Robert A. Smith, who utilized a steam-powered engine on a steamroller-like chassis. Originally designed for clearing railroad tracks, Smith's creation would go on to inspire other inventors, such as Eureka C. Bown, who was the first woman to patent a street sweeper. Utilizing a system of swappable broom heads to allow for the collection of various types of refuse, even including snow, Bound's invention improved over previous designs mostly due to the long lifespan of her vehicles. A later street sweeper was invented by a man named Charles B. Brooks in 1896, as a trailer for a truck. Inspired by Bishop's previous patent back in 1849, Brooks did not seek to alter the original design too much, and effectively recreated Bishop's sweeper on the chassis of a truck trailer, with some differences such as in varied brush length and refuse offloading, with the addition of interchangeable brooms, inspired by Bound's patent, and scrapers used for the removal of ice and snow. Brooks was not the first man to attempt the creation of a trailer street sweeper, and various designs predated his patent, most of which were unnecessarily complex or impractical to produce. In total, there were 315 patents filed in the U.S. for street sweeping devices prior to 1900, almost all of which would not survive to see the 20th century. It was in 1911 that the first gas-powered street sweeper was created, being invented by John M. Murphy in Elgin, Illinois. After two years of prototyping, Murphy, along with his business partners, secured a deal with the city of Boise, Idaho, and in 1913, Murphy's design would finally take to the streets. What differentiated Murphy's design over previous sweeper iterations, outside of the gas engine, was the position of the sweeping mechanism in front of the driver and the lack of conveyor belt. I guess this lack of conveyor belt must have been a detriment to the design, because a few years later in 1917, Murphy would file another patent for a slightly improved sweeper, this time with a belt mechanism. The 1920s saw the invention of the suction street cleaner, a design which combined the recent advent of the vacuum cleaner with a street sweeper. Bernard Kern, the inventor of this, quote, gas-electric suction street sweeper, drastically improved street cleanliness standards as his design was so effective. Through the clever usage of a tractor-trailer setup, Kern's design was able to store more refuse and finer particles of it, housing them in a metallic enclosed trailer. This design also seeked to shelter the operator, featuring a mostly enclosed cabin up front. In the 1930s, it was actually the Soviets who made the next innovation in street sweeping technology, as they utilized small water jets to dampen the streets during the cleaning process. These sweepers, which were really just modified cars, featured two laterally rotating round brushes on either side of the vehicle, which would kick refuse into the holding container at the rear of the car. 
These Russian sweepers would face much criticism from drivers, as they were unwieldy and difficult to operate efficiently, which led to further Soviet innovations in the 1940s, resulting in the creation of this sweeper. Back over in the US, antiquated designs from decades prior were still on the road, prompting the invention of the Hubley Elgin Street Sweeper, which came from the company that John Murphy had founded some 30 years prior. This design was odd as it featured only three wheels, two at the front and one at the back, which gave the vehicle a triangular sort of shape. Similar designs would be used in the 50s and 60s, each seeing small improvements over previous versions such as an enclosed cabin, improved safety features, water jets, increased speed, and engine efficiency. Offshoots of these designs still exist in many U.S. municipalities, and though they're significantly more comfortable and efficient vehicles now, their outward appearance has changed little over the course of the last half century. It was in the 1970s that we'd finally see four-wheeled sweepers make a comeback. Public sanitation as well as water cleanliness standards increased during the 60s and early 70s, and the public was in need of a more effective and efficient street sweeper. Water sprayers were standard by this point in time, and brushes were improved to pick up particles as small as 10 microns in diameter. Now, there are a lot of street sweeper variations today, and I can't speak for all of them, but in general, the average sweeper takes the form of a small truck, fitted with the very same laterally rotating brushes which became popular in Soviet Russia. Most of these trucks are certified to PM10 and PM2.5 standards, which means that they can pick up particles as small as 2.5 microns in size. Sweepers are an incredibly important public service that not only keep our streets clean, but our environment clean as well, preventing even the smallest particles from making their way into the water supply or the air. In Switzerland in 2018, the first fully electric street sweeper was introduced, an innovation that's seen many others follow, as municipalities slowly replaced their old gas-powered sweepers with electric options. We owe a lot to the men and women who've helped to improve the cleanliness of our cities over the course of human history. And whether they had a broom or a pen in hand, we should thank all of them for the work they've done to make our lives a little cleaner. Thanks for watching and let me know what kind of video you'd like to see next. If you're interested in Discord, this channel does have a server which is desperately in need of revival, so feel free to check out the link in the description below. Thanks again and goodbye.